First, we have Armada, we have Leffen, Mango was on the stream earlier, um, Hugs is here, Larry, ZD, uh, Light from Tri State. There's a bunch of kills there. Oh, and how can I forget Tweak? How could you forget Tweak? How could I forget Tweak? Yeah, this is Tweak's final chance to get in Summit. I mean, this is uh, everyone's final chance to get in Summit. Well, a lot of people that are here are already in it, though. We got Mango in it. We got Mango's in it. Leppin is in it. Yeah. Um, Void is here, but he's not competing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's commentating today. That's right. He was going to enter dubs, but then they, he didn't enter dubs for whatever reason. Uh, is Esam in Summit? No, uh, he wouldn't be here. I feel like no, he wouldn't be here. Wait, hold on. I thought he was. I thought he got voted in. Oh, he almost did. He was like no, really he, in contention. He did not make it. That's right. Yeah, yeah. He was in contention. Very close to making it. Pikachu. But we'll yeah. see. Okay, so Pokemon Trainer versus Esam's Pikachu. This should be a very fun set. Yeah. Once they get all these strikes, I mean, once they get everything going, both players putting on their music. Can Darian listen to music? I don't think he listens to music. I don't know. Maybe. I like. That's kind of one of the things that I've always had a weird, uh, weird thing about. It's like when you're listening to music, I feel like it kind of takes away from sound cues in the game. Well, some people don't need sound cues. Yeah. I, I mean, th some people would much rather listen to something that would help them focus mm. than, uh, I don't know, the destruction of Smash Ultimate. Maybe. And Darian starting off Squirtle, immediately just throwing out that water gun. That's right. I mean, that was actually kind of smart because uh, with how aggressive Esam is, you know the first thing he's going to want to do is run at his opponent, most likely. So it's just using the water gun would have given him a little bit more space. Oh, but now Esam's getting a lot of his damage. And kind of one of the things about Pokemon Trainer is like it's three characters in one, right? Uh -huh. But I feel like Pikachu kind of does Squirtle's job better than Squirtle. You know, where you're racking up damage, you get a, a good amount of percent, and then like you kind of reset into like a kill mode, like kill zone right. mode. Right. But uh, I, I feel like Pandaria needed to switch off into Ivysaur practically a bit sooner than expected. Yeah, I mean, typically we see like Pokemon trainers switching to Ivysaur around mid percent. Yeah. Uh, just because now they're starting to approach those dead percents for Ivysaur, or to a point where they want to get zoned out. Oh man, Ooh. that was awful. Great DI coming in from Pandarian. Actually. That's right. Good punish from Esam using the Thunder. But now sticking with Charizard, being that heavy, but still weight difference not going to be enough to keep him in the game. Yeah. Um, it looked like Pandarian was trying to go for a pivot grab, but it wasn't fast enough for Pikachu's dash attack. Ooh, that trip on the down tilt. Oh, training with the Skull Bash and the S Smash from Pandarian. I don't think that was the move, Esam. Don't think, uh, don't think Hepa was the move. Oh, and this is this is kind of a whoa Ooh, great double, double parry. parry. Um, like Ivysaur is practically a sword character with how big the distrends are. Oh, definitely he plays like a sword character yeah. with the, with oh, the way that's mine works. No, nope, he's gonna flare blitz back. Oh. He's gonna be able to make that ledge. Yeah, just a little too high. If he's if Pandarian was a little shorter and wasn't able to snap uh, snap the ledge with uh, flare blitz, I think she will. I think the Pandarian would have died. Okay, I like the stall with the Pokemon switch. Of course, it makes him uh, invulnerable oh, as that's well. It. And that was, I didn't expect him to actually get to land that one. But Esam knows his character way too well. That's right. I wonder who uh, who he actually has to get practice against for this matchup because he looks very comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, he is very comfortable with this matchup. It seems like to uh, it seems to know like most of the weaknesses of his character. Even using the quick attack to make sure though that uh, Pandarian isn't in a position to punish him. Yeah, and actually, all these Thunder Jolt setups are actually putting in work for him. Esam using Thunder Jolt in this matchup a lot more than he is in, in the previous matchups we saw him in. Right, right. Okay. Oh, the down air spike, but not able to convert. Yeah. And there, there we go. Esam zoning him out, uh, zoning out Pandarian uh, just a bit with the uh, neutral beat. Pandarian misinputting accidentally. I don't think that him. was a misinput, actually. I, down no. air into up air. Wow, taking explosive stock. But I think it, he's expecting that uh, 
for a quick attack cross up like that. He's expecting the bullet seat to actually pick it up. Yeah. Maybe. And Arian trying to use fair at. Trying to get as much pressure as possible. Okay, goes there's faced out forward air. Looking like a sortie. Yeah. Oh, there's a force match, but it got sour spotted. Oh, there's the fair. Is that going to be it? No, Charizard's a big, heavy boy. That's right. He's going to have to flare blitz. Oh, no, this is a bad spot. Oh, but it's fine. Yeah, getting sent across the stage. Flare blitzing again, and then getting punished by a down air from Ethan. That's actually really unfortunate. The way he ended up in that position is that he was falling down with Ivysaur, and then he tried to grab ledge with up B, but it just didn't home onto. You could just see Ivysaur kind of whip it into the air. Yeah. And just That's why he had to switch. Yeah, it's unfortunate. But. It's kind of also another thing. Like sometimes they wanna, they don't wanna grab the, they don't wanna grab the ledge because that whole time coming back up, they are vulnerable. That's like, true. So maybe Pandarian was thinking maybe if I switch to Charizard, it'd be a safer recovery because if I, I could snap the ledge easier with right, the hitbox right, right, right. all the way up. Okay. And well, now we see Yoshi's uh, island. Yeah. And Squirtle kind of having a, a tough time. Dealing with Pikachu, I feel like Pikachu's, once again, Pikachu's hitboxes are just slightly better. That's true. I mean, they don't have the type advantage in this game, but if they did, ooh, this would be just that much worse. Yeah, <laughs> it lo looks like type advantage is still a thing. <laughs> but if it was still a thing, this one wouldn't be a good matchup. Yes, it would be fairly easy. Remember, Pikachu did lose to a Bellsprout once. Yeah. Um, oh, good tech on the ledge. Oh, up there is to Bear. And Darian kind of getting rocked in terms of percent right now. And I like that. Just player blitzing early, retreating to the other side of the stage, giving him some room to breathe and, you know, almost resetting. Yeah. This is a really tricky spot for Pandarian. Uh, Pandarian. Oh, what, what was that? <laughs> what? Is that like a grab release with up smash? Yeah. It, 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 I didn't even think that up smash was going to kill. I mean, just the way that, just from the sound cue, yeah. it didn't sound like it would. Yeah, it I mean, definitely sounded like a sour spot. Yeah, it definitely felt like a sour spot, too. There's the up here recovery and the switch to Charizard. I'm wanting that extra jump. And Ethan is so comfortable in, in this match, he's not even using the ledge to recover. He's typically going above ledge and just using the quick attack to punish. Yeah, but you don't want to be there. Anywhere above, Ivy Swords a no zone. No fly zone at all. That's right. Drag getting the drag down with the Narian. Usman's gonna whip, and now Pandarian answering right back. Easy 53, almost taking that stock. That was insane knockback. That looked like it should have killed. I mean, for that to have killed at 50%, that would have been, I would have called shenanigans. Yeah, that would have been gross. Oh, there's the down air not popping up Esam, though. Yeah, Uppy not gonna reach in that position. But he is able to land a forward air, put more damage. You know, just keeping up and making sure that this game, keeping it as close as possible. Yeah, he, Pandarian. Honestly, I feel like Pandarian should start the games off with Ivysaur. If if she could, if Pandarian could, because like with um how well. Pandarian oh, up smash him! Up power. smash him! <laughs> or fly. <laughs> up throw! That's it. He he's them exploded. Yeah, he got out of there. I mean, that's just that balloon knockback from Smash Ultimate. Gets him out of here. Gets you out of here super quick. Gets you back in the game. Oh, man. There's that back air. Not going to... Not really doing much in terms of pressure. Right, but, but there's the dash attack. I mean, that's just those lead traps of Esam. You've been seeing him use that dash attack against those big bodies quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, one thing I liked was that Esam's uh, Thunder Jolt actually covered the neutral getup. And then the dash attack covered the getup attack. Because they have invincibility on getup attack now. Right, right. So like, once the invincibility wore off, when he was doing it to, uh, once Pandora was trying to get off the Thunder Jolt, Esam counteracted with the dash attack immediately after. Top player Esam showing his strengths. Yeah. And they're just continuing his chase against Pandarian. Oh. Thunder connects, but it doesn't take the stock. Yeah. Pandarian looking like he's just trying to fight for his stock. Not end up in losers just yet. Yeah, but. Look at Pandarian coming back. Uh, e Sam's really in, a, in still in the deficit, though. Oh, there's a forward smash, but it was kind of a sour spot. It was too close in. Oh, that, that still has flare blitz. Oh, wow! Flare blitzing high, not opting to go for the ledge, and then getting punished by E Sam. 
Pokemon. He's saying with the hardest of reads. No, it, no, actually, you know what? It's that it's that new Smash Ultimate mechanic where if you're on the ground, you can't cross them up. So like Pandarian, even though the move was over, the old games she would have crossed them up. Right. He's saying realizing, oh, this game's like you can't cross me up anymore. I'll just charge this up Smash. He charged it for like a hot second, actually. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, like, just with the amount of recovery that one, that Flare Blitz has, yeah, go ahead, charge it fully. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, what was that option? That was an interesting one, but Pandaren finally getting the combo going as Squirtle. That's right, he got a little bit of the uh, the flood there. Yeah, ESAM covering with draw. Back air, back air, not gonna connect. And now Pandarian looking a lot more comfortable. Oh, go, opting to go for an up air instead of the, the up B. But good back air out of shield. I mean, that back air it's actually comes out pretty quick, and it has a good amount of range. So amazing tool for Ivysaur. Yeah, it's still a great tool and, and compared to Brawl. OK, big punish from Pandarian. Unfortunately, not going to be able to get the stock. Hit a grab getting beaten out by Jab or Thunder Jolt and push him oh, back. Oh, no, no, no. That was almost it. Pandaria, I felt like if Pandarian didn't switch, she might have been able to get the stock with the forward smash from Squirtle. I mean, hard to tell. Yeah. Hard to tell. I, I don't think Whoa. Pandarian was expecting to actually land that uh, water gun. There's the up throw. That's going to be the stock. That was balloon effect is uh, trip sometimes. That's right. Now switching to Squirtle being very evasive. Uh, just trying to avoid Isam's yeah, invulnerability attacks. Dabs coming in from me, Sam. No forward smash. Up throw into up air. Wow, Pandarian. 30 damage. Yeah, Pandarian with a, like, a great momentum shift right now. She needs, the she needs these games. Uh, Pandarian needs these games. Okay, quick attack again, landing for Esam, and the aggression continues, continuing to increase the damage. Up F smash going to connect. Yeah. There is the parry on the Thunder Jolt. Didn't matter. Esam still get able to get this damage. Oh, oh no! Very this isn't where you want to go. No, he's dead. Oh, that was me. I might even go for the footstool. <laughs> That's so unfortunate it's because that was a fresh stock too. I know. It's 35 percent, Esam. Man, Pandarian was looking so clean. Yeah, very unfortunate for Pandarian, but he's not out yet. Esam already at 86 percent. He's just one F smash away, and he is fishing for those F smashes. He's throwing them out. And if you want to see a, a compilation of Esam play, you should see these past three games. E, <laughs> now that Esam has had all this momentum, he's, he's been in the zone. That's right. A quick switch and a quick flare blitz. Gonna get Pandarian back on stage. Now Pandarian looking for just some type of hit. Double parry, but still not able to actually convert into a punish. Esam with the Thunder Troll and the quick attack trying to cover everything. Oh man, great, great Pokemon switch. That's right, but now he's kind of in that position again. Oh, you're hanging out there too long, Pandari. It's, it's the withdrawals that were actually putting him in like a horrible position. Just because if you think about like just the angle on the ledges. <laughs> don't give me that lucky, <laughs> Sam. Give 